Hello everyone and welcome to this newest edition of Men at Arms. This is Rimlace from 40k Theories. Hi, I'm Viora. I would say blood for the blood god, but I'm a champion of Slanesh. Yes, in case you hadn't guessed, well, for, judging from the episode's title, today we're going to be looking at the weapons of the forces of chaos. So, we're going to jump right into things with the classic weapon of chaos space marines, the chain axe. Now, chain axes are obviously given the name a chain weapon in the form of an axe most probably used by corn berserkers. It has motorized chainsaw teeth and is able to tear through both flesh and armor with relative ease, and has become pretty much a symbol of corn berserkers and internal of the World Eaters Legion, but has been also used by Imperial forces such as the Flesh Terrors and the Space Wolves. And there's also a second pattern of this called the Castilla pattern, which basically is a massive double-headed version of the weapon using both hands. So... The Chain Axe, one of the iconic weapons of Chaos, and Warhammer 40k Universe in general, is actually quite practical as far as axe space weaponry goes. Let me, let, let me explain why. We already have something very similar to this. It's called a Chain Saw. It's used by lumberjacks tree, and tree printers alike. It's quite effective at the job of cutting down trees with significantly less effort and more precision than an old-fashioned axe. But how would this work exactly? Let's talk about melee weapons as well. Originally, you had three options whenever you wanted to beat someone to death. You could slash them, you could pierce them, or you could bash them over the head. Um, swords were for slashing, spears and pikes were for piercing, and bashing you generally had a club, mace, or just a big hammer. An axe is a hybrid between a sword and a hammer. It uses sheer weight and power to literally cleave the opponent apart, while at the same time delivering a very heavy-handed blow similar to what you would expect to receive from someone using a blunt weapon. So while it doesn't hurt as much as a mace when it bashes you and doesn't cut nearly as cleanly as a sword, it hurts a lot and can just, if it doesn't pierce you and cut your flesh off, it will just bash the bone and tissue underneath the armor that you're wearing that stopped it. Leaving very heavy bruises and oftentimes limiting the capacity of someone to fight back. The problem with the axe is there's no room for finesse. Uh, you slam it down, cut into someone, and keep hammering until you break through their defense. There's no fainting since all the weight is on the business end and you're having to use the business end to swing constantly. And you have zero room to actually let up. If you stop hitting someone and stop swinging at them, you die. Adding a chain blade does solve the problem of, you know, the axe getting stuck in someone. A very common problem with any melee weapon is that it gets stuck. Well, with the chain blade, it immediately cuts through whatever part of the body it's stuck in and you pull it back out but like all axes this weapon still comes down to fatigue as a person keeps swinging they wear down they lose some of their raw aggression and the axe becomes less effective for a quick fight an axe is beautiful it's devastating you so long as you keep swinging there's no room to swing back at you but for a prolonged engagement, the wielder is the issue, not the weapon. You say the user um, will um, end up losing aggression. You are, we're talking about corn berserkers, right? I'm aware we are talking <laughs> about corn berserkers. I'm also aware we're talking about most forces of chaos who happen to wield this monstrosity. Um, but I, I know they're corn berserkers. I know they get all their energy and all their rage and hate and everything. But you gotta admit that there are times when you hear those guys going, ah, 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 because they're tired. They're still. It may take them several hours to do so, though. In fairness. In fairness, but it hasn't the 40k had battles that rage for months? Months, years, centuries. I mean, eventually he's gonna be like, "All right, I need a break." And then kind of betrayer comes and shoots you all with a flamer for being so cowardly and wanting a break. Exactly. Right, so moving away from the core, we're going to turn to Slanesh for a bit for the Sonic Blaster. Now, the Sonic Blaster is a sonic weapon, as in a noise weapon, used by noise marines, naturally. It produces waves of devastating sound which can rip targets apart and produce either a continuous sound or many shorter pulses. 
There are also enlarged versions used on Chaos Dreadnoughts. Okay, so this type of sound w attack weapon seems like something completely out of fantasy or science fiction, but in fact, we have them. When you hear news what? about... Yeah, yeah, you ready for this one? So when you look on the news and you see Dakota Pipeline protesters being hit with sound cannons, we're referring to the LRAD sound cannon, long-range acoustic device. This weapon is supposed to be non-lethal and uses a combination of directed sound waves and extremely high-pitched sound shot at targets along a frequency that does not expand into the airwaves but instead remains a focused beam of sound. It's literally engineered in a way that cuts through the air rather than reverberating across it. Now, imagine being hit with an air horn at point blank range. Your ears are ringing, your head hurts, your whole body seizes up. And you're trying to get away from whatever is doing that piercing, awful sound to the rest of your being. The LRAD is a way cranked up version of that. And it can be turned up to 11 to pop and rupture your eardrums, causing permanent damage. Or what? you can go total Joker and turn it up to 13. It has a kill setting. Jesus. I mean, because from, from a past experience, when I was younger, I actually went to go see um, Cannibal Corpse at the Electric Ballroom in London, and I was standing right near the huge um, the speaker system on the sides of the stage and you know when they were playing I could feel my lungs vibrate just from the sheer sound of that so imagine that but on a more devastating scale where you can just feel your entire body just start to go Ugh, for lack of a better well, term when you, when you turn it up to the kill setting apparently um, victims experience heart reverberations that actually cause murmurs causing the heart eventually to stop due to the frequency of the sound hitting you in addition to it actually can cause your blood vessels to seize up from the pain meaning you will literally block your own bloodstream and kill yourself with a heart attack damn um, the sound cannon also is known to cause uh, the eyeballs to pop out of the head from the compressed sound getting underneath your eye sockets and causing them to pop forward. These v weapons are mounted on both police vehicles and the Navy is using them as an anti-piracy device because pirates suddenly don't want to fight when they have to uh, cover their ears. I can imagine so. Now, the Sonic Blaster is actually a weapon capable of doing all of this, as I've stated above. I, I started to do the math for this and then realized somebody had already done it for me. This weapon exists, and there's statistics for how much for frequency of sound, how much it uses. You can totally check this out. There's a full wiki available. There's a full uh, article available by the United States military on its development. It's It was fascinating. Um, but this uh, Sonic Blaster can actually has a, another setting called anti-armor that can turn up the sound apparently to blow apart steel ow ow indeed which means that I could imagine that there's eventually a setting to sound to literally blow the flesh off the body the Sindel setting as it were <laughs> speaking of noise weapons We've also got the Blastmaster, which is basically a bass guitar on steroids. It produces a, a huge throbbing bass note, a direct quote, mind you, not just me being a pervert, um, which is strong enough to burst eyeballs, rupture organs, and even shatter boulders. At different frequencies, the weapon can have different effects, either harming individuals with a varying frequency or destroying an entire area with a single pulsating frequency. Okay, so the Blastmaster, uh, based upon my research, is a area of effect version of the Sonic Blaster. They are effectively the same weapon, just the Blastmaster has decided that I'm going to hit a very large area rather than a small rather than a focused hammer of a single target. To emphasize roughly the largeness of this area, after doing research and finding several battles in the Horus Heresy where these apparently appeared. Yeah, the cacophony, yeah. The uh, weapon is capable of hitting an area of roughly 200 square meters. 
that's a lot of base. Um, to emphasize how large this actually is, guys, um, main modern main battle tanks are only about 10 to 14 meters across on the front. So you could have five of them lying side to side, and that's about your area of effect. I was going to say drop the base joke, but I think that would be a bit below me. Um, regardless, that's still an absolutely devastating area of effect. And it does have the same capability of literally blowing steel off of armored plating or ripping the flesh from a person just by sheer wave of sound. Anyone hit with this weapon, I imagine, is immediately and permanently deafened. Furthermore, anyone hit with this weapon is probably, at the very minimum, stunned, if not outright dying from internal rupturing of all of their organs. I just had an, a, a thought. Obviously, given how a space marine's hearing is supposed to be more sensitive than a normal human's, obviously this must be absolutely excruciating to them, even on a much larger scale than the regular human. Yes, and um, furthermore... To illustrate just how lethal sound can be, there's actually a vehicle called the Kaboom Truck that is designed to create the lowest and hardest bass tone logically possible at the loudest volume. A, the brown human, a human being can only stand inside of this truck for 33 seconds before they have to get out and seek medical attention. Jesus. Sound can kill you. It can indeed, it seems. All right, next up, we have a another iconic heavy weapon, the Reaper Auto Cannon. Now, the Reaper Auto Cannon is a version of the Auto Cannon predominantly used by Chaos Space Marine Terminators. Um, it was relatively common during the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, but amongst Loyalist forces, it was phased out in favor of the Assault Cannon, which, as we described previously, is pretty much a pile of shit. Um, the Reaper is a combat rapid firing auto cannon which depends upon the strength of a Terminator to stabilize the weapon and cope with its massive recoil. Okay, this is a very simple modern auto cannon. We see these on Humvees, FV721 boxes, Warriors. They're also used as coaxial main battle tank guns to help guide the shell in the event the computer targeting system is not functioning properly. Or if you just want to, you know, spray 20 to 30 millimeter sh shot into someone. This is just... It's, it's, it's a modern auto cannon. I mean, the Terminator armor would be required for them to be able to wield the bloody thing, of course, because uh, a 20 or 30 millimeter cannon is usually mounted onto a light vehicle at the very minimum. This is a the, the, the smallest known mounting for a 20 millimeter auto cannon is a pickup truck. Okay. So we're going to go a little bit dirty now. The Blight Grenade, also known as the Death Head of Nurgle. These are explosive devices bloated and swollen with pathogens and diseases used by Plague Marines. When they explode, the resulting shrapnel carries away deadly toxins and contagions that can penetrate cracks in armor, cause flesh to boil and slough away, and fill the air with blinding spores, all the while while keeping the victim alive until the very end. Some versions of the Blight Grenade resemble maggot-filled shrunken heads, while others are actually made from severed heads. Okay. We've actually tried chemical weapons in handheld form. It kind of backfired on us from the direction of the wind resulting in killing the people who threw the grenade or their squad. Yeah, yeah. However, since Nurgle basically makes you immune to the diseases you're spreading, taking this into account, this is a complete area denial weapon for generations. A single one of these can infect an entire trench with deadly virus, toxins, and biological destruction. By doing this, you create a section of land that's completely uninhabitable to anyone except your own troops. In effect, the Blight Grenade causes sections of land to be not retakeable without significant purification efforts. Because of this, the Nurgle Assault, long after it's been wiped out and the area retaken, is still killing people and inhabitants of the area who... Are can no longer simply no longer live or occupy the, the vicinity. How does this stack up in comparison to the Dark Eldar uh, glass virus? This is much worse. Damn. 
what is this Nug we're talking the, about? The, the, gla the glass virus eventually runs out of hosts to infect, and according to the Dark Eldar, uh, stops infecting people once it ha no longer has a host. This, this just lingers. It just stays there for freaking ever till you purify it and 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 purge it. Essentially, it's the Energizer Bunny of diseases. This denies technology, strategic resources, and other important pieces of land, or it can even a single grenade if it if the spread of the virus is not contained quickly enough, could deny an entire planet to the enemy while allowing your troops to occupy it indefinitely. This is bioengineered weapon on a insane level. Bioengineered to only affect people without certain DNA markers. You so, only would deploy this if you intend mass genocide. You were going to say? I was just going to say, so in essence, it's very good if you want to praise Nurgle. Yeah! It's very good if you want to praise Nurgle. In every way, shape, and form. Exterminate is that planet now. Why? Someone threw a black grenade. Why indeed. Okay, so next up we have the Man Reaper. Now the Man Reaper is a power scythe. Now, these power scythes tend to be quite rusty and dip into filth seeping from the throne of Nurgle itself. The older versions of power scythe used by these basements during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy never really fully caught on because, well, they preferred using power swords and power axes to power scythes. So it's very rare to find amongst Imperial forces, but still quite common amongst Chaos. So, scythes um, aren't really popular as melee weapons because... The only real way to use the weapon is a cutting tool, and only as a couple of ways to swing it. This type of weapon doesn't have the most capable or flexible method of blocking either. The advantage to a scythe like this is raw swinging power. All the weights on the business end, and one could get some real velocity and therefore force behind the attacks. However, and this is a huge, big butt, like bigger than my bubble butt, since we went over power weapons in the Space Marine, and I believe we did it again in the Imperial Guard episode, we know that power weapons cut using electrical current to superheat whatever they're slicing through, meaning velocity and force of the weapon usually doesn't matter when you hit because you're going to turn the target to butter and just be able to cut through it like a hot knife. The power scythe, therefore, has one real purpose, cutting through multiple foes at once since that you can really get some force and velocity up behind the weapon and since it's slicing through things like they are virtually non-existent on a cellular level you're not losing that much force when you swing it's very unlikely to get stuck in a target so much as just slice through the guy and then slice into his friend that's standing next to him if you will um, literally harvesting the enemy so while the trade-off is the loss of flexibility, blocking ability, and ability to faint, because since all the weight's on one end, fainting is right out, you gain the ability to slice through several soldiers at once, or easily smash through a tank, its occupants, and someone who happened to be standing next to you just who was like, ooh, that was, oh god! <laughs> so basically, this is an area of effect power weapon. It doesn't quite liquefy in the same way that a power fist does. Okay, moving on then, we have next up the Widowmakers. And yes, I know we're going to be examining a few unique weapons, pretty much unique to certain individuals, because quite frankly, Chaos Space Marines use a lot of weaponry that's still used by Imperial forces that we've already covered. So, with Widowmakers, they're micro serrated throwing knives used by Conrad Kerr, the Primarch of the Night Lords. And he favoured these over firearms and used them to disable and maim, specifically. Okay, so to me, Widowmakers is a big misnomer. Because when it comes to precision thrown weapons, precision thrown weapons are not often super lethal. Um, the, these movies where you see people throwing knives through people's skulls, that took a shitload of force. Which, in fairness, a Primark could generate. 
In Japan, these weapons are referred to as kunai. Any weapon that's too small to kill but large enough to maim. We don't. What you see in video games and movies where like a ninja throws a kunai and drops somebody outright, yeah, that doesn't happen. Kunai are meant to annoy, maim, and possibly injure in a way to reduce the capabilities of the other fighter. They are not meant in any way, shape, or form to actually deal with armor, since they don't have the mass to apply enough force to penetrate the armor in most cases. And what will usually end up happening is you throw a throwing knife you can throw it as hard as you want. If it hits something that's more dense than it, the equal and opposite reaction is that the throwing knife will be the one to shatter, not the armor plating it hit. So while most martial arts and jiu-jitsu classes will teach you how kunai work, they will remind you not to rely on them to achieve your defense or to kill your target. They will often cause damage and rip off flesh and reduce some of the ability of them to fight you, but it's highly unlikely that they will drop. So the term Widowmakers, I don't see these as killing people very often. I would not expect these weapons to do enough damage on a regular basis to kill a person when it's thrown, much less deal with a Space Marine's power armor. Even thrown by a Space Marine, if it's just going to penetrate the person, fair enough. But when you're talking about ramping up that kind of force being thrown, the knife might actually just do a pass-through. Rather than hitting a bone or causing any internal organ damage, there's a hole in one side and a hole in the other. A simple heavy-duty bandage and later stitches will repair the wound. Although, in fairness, because... One, and these generally are being thrown by a Primarch, with his own superior strength and reflexes, even compared to that of a Space Marine. You, you can easily imagine him easily, you know, aiming for, like, say, you know, the lenses of a Space Marine helmet and just throwing it through the eye socket, through the brain. Through the eye socket, yes. Um, however, considering how small the eye sockets are, considering how large these actually are, since the Primarch's hands are huge, um... It would go into the eye socket, it might hit the eye inside, but it's not going to be able to go any further, it'll be stopped by the rest of the helmet. If it hits a weak point in the helmet, fair enough, but I don't see the weak points as being extremely vital areas in most cases, especially with, like, if they have the uh, Aquila pattern power armor with the increased throat guard, then you, th you're going to hit a joint, but the joint is only going to be a minor wound and it's only until the knife is removed that the wound is really annoying or incapacitating to the target. Simply put, weapons such as a kunai style throwing weapon, does, we don't have any way to really improve these weapons and just taking them to the next level doesn't actually improve their design, it actually hinders it. Fair enough. Although admittedly, a lot of space from sergeants tend to go without their helmets for some bizarre reasons, so they'll be a much easier target to pick off. Exactly. Which is why you wear a helmet. <laughs> so this shit doesn't happen. 